Hello, and welcome to Meet the Innovator, a LinkedIn Live series brought to you by Propel Labs. I am Jamie Taylor, your host, and these are power punches of insight brought to you in under 15 minutes from some of the brightest minds in the world. And I'm extremely pleased to have with us today one of the brightest minds in supply chain tech and sustainability, Wolfgang Lehmacher, coming to us all the way from Hong Kong. Wolfgang, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks for the invite. So Wolfgang, let's start with a sense of the work that you have underway today and what brought you to this work. We'd love to hear a little bit about your career path and in particular, the projects you have underway right now. I have always been uh, focusing on uh, the crossroads of technology and sustainability and sustainability at large. This means uh, a multifaceted uh, uh, world that balances economic, social, ethical, um, political, cultural, and uh, whatever makes our life rich uh, with, uh, within business models, within businesses, and within society. And uh, uh, one of my, my beliefs is that um, there is rarely a silver bullet. So we have to have a holistic view. Um, I have been running businesses for many, many years in corporate uh, in corporates and um, have been a consultant. I have been at the World Economic Forum, uh, the head of supply chain uh, and transport industries. So I have uh, also tried to, to do a variety of things to build a broad uh, foundation for the work I'm doing. Currently, probably the biggest project um, I'm uh, involved in is a um, digitization project of uh, information flows uh, in uh, supply chain. It is a project between uh, uh, Sweden and Singapore, so it's a broad corridor to look at, and uh, it's a middleware, and it is a community at the same time that builds that middleware. And what I mean with community, it's a consortium led by RISE, Research Institutes of Sweden, and ASTAR, which is the equivalent in uh, Singapore. So what are we doing there is to build a middleware that connects local or individual watchtowers, dashboards, information centers and one of the key elements is collaboration and um, this is probably one of the hardest things to do in today's world but uh, we may come to that later so this is a a digitalization project and a collaboration project at the same time and uh, i'm not only doing projects i'm also writing quite a lot um, and writing is part of the the thinking process and the design process i'm not sure whether this is clear in everybody's mind and um, we have written and i say we because i also think that you do better writing if you do it together with other experts so we have written one piece uh, about CEDAS, collaboration and digitalization for economic and societal value. And, and probably this represents or reflects the, the philosophy and uh, the foundation uh, I base my work on. And, and it says, uh, in fact, that the pair of collaboration and digitalization is um, mutually reinforcing meaning that if you don't have collaboration, you will not have large-scale digitalization. But without digitalization, we can hardly collaborate in uh, the complex and populated world uh, we are living in. And, on, and this needs to be balanced, and this needs to be uh, developed in a balanced way. And then we have the other side of the equation, which is economic and uh, societal capital, and this has also to be in balance. So we need to look at intellectual capital and social capital, uh, well-being capital, and then 
we have to look into returns and revenues and profits and ROIs. So, but uh, I'm a strong believer that also there, the one hardly goes over a long period of time without the other. And uh, uh, so, so maybe the last thing uh, to say is that we are uh, short of, of collaborative effort. Uh, because we are living in a in a very fragmented world currently. And keying off of that, Wolfgang, and really taking this elevated perch that you clearly assume in the projects you undertake, as you scan the landscape today, where do you see the greatest challenges or opportunities as it pertains to supply chain, tech, and sustainability? As I've said, the... The current fragmentation, and uh, we can speak about the U.S.-China decoupling, which is a major challenge for supply chain uh, professionals. Um, but we also see see uh, fragmentation in terms of um, geopolitics. We have a war in Europe, which we hadn't had for, for quite a while. Uh, and this makes our life very, very hard. It makes our life hard as supply chain professionals, and it makes our our life hard as people who want to see a much more sustainable and balanced world. So this is this is a a major hurdle, and I hope that we get to a more balanced. Again, balance is a is a key key element in my thinking. A more balanced uh, situation. Uh, and I speak here about the balance between competition and collaboration. And nature is applying that concept since it exists. So in our body, there is competition and there is collaboration, and, and we, we need both. So this is, this is one, one uh, big, big point and big challenge. The other big challenge is the speed. Um, we have been now for some decades connected over the internet. Uh, thanks to the internet, we have the conversation today. Um, and this has created an enormous basis for innovation and for development. And this, this also explains why fragmentation is not good, because we need to be connected to exchange ideas and to uh, tap into the different resources available on the, on the planet. But we have reached a level of sophistication and the speed of development, which makes it very hard uh, for people to, to keep uh, pace. So, and then because also the magnitude of, of our doing, not only that we are 8 billion people on the planet, but also the economy which we have built, the magnitude of our, of our doing, the negative impact of our doing is another uh, challenge, the dimension of it. So we have a speed dimension, we have a magnitude dimension, and we are, have a fragmentation dimension when I think about the challenges today. Absolutely brilliant, Wolfgang. Your ability to see these different dimensions and facets is clear. And your ability to bring these holistic approaches that you referenced at the start seems clear as well. And thinking about how you develop this perspective, how through your own journey, through education and career path and so forth, you arrived at these insights that you've been able to develop today. And as you continue to progress in your role and look back, could you provide any advice to those in our audience today who are considering a career at the intersection of supply, supply chain tech and sustainability, or those who are newly curious to the space, thanks to this conversation? First, I would like to say that everybody needs to find their individual best path forward. And this goes back to my belief that there is hardly a silver bullet. So there's hardly a one size fits all advice. But there, I think there are some nuggets um, which have been shared with me 
and which have helped me to to develop my my skill set. And um, one is probably to find my own way, so to to run based on my own clock. Um, but the other is, in fact, is to run. Um, and running means means many things. It, it means move and do things. It means also retreat and think about things, uh, develop a, um, a set of principles. For example, one principle which have help, has helped me a lot in leadership is the principle of objectivity. Um, looking at, at problems and not listening and recalling what everybody has said and repeating it, but again, to balance it out and, and try to find criteria which seem to lead me, because we can never be, be certain, see me, uh, lead me to the, the best possible solution. So, so that's something I, I, I think life is easier if you have a code of conduct, a set of principles, uh, because that's that's your compass, right? That's your compass, and uh, it helps you to navigate the the landscape. Uh, then what I what I always uh, believed in, and when I look at the kids, and and we we need to define work as fun. Work is not. I hear so often, oh, the hard work will will lead to success. I, I would say fun work leads to success. Um, yes, it cannot be fun every day, and, and everything has, has its downsides, sides, but um, I, for me, work is play. So I pick the projects which I like to work on, which interest me. Um, then when, when we go down that road further, um, it is also about continuous learning and moving out of the comfort zone. Might might, might sound uh, like uh, as I like cold coffee, uh, but I'm doing this regularly, starting with a blank piece of paper. It's like an artist sitting in front of a stone and thinking what he could do out of it. And this is creation, right? So, so having the courage to just start creating something new. And this is probably already a long list. So uh, work according to your own clock, um, have a good set of principles, um, do, do things, move. Life is a muscle that needs to be worked. Um, and then um, have courage uh, to to help yourself to learn. And uh, don't be scared uh, of the new. Um, I think uh, the li life is a discovery as well. And uh, uh, it's the most beautiful thing to make a statue out of a stone. Absolutely brilliant, Wolfgang. I think we're all leaving this discussion infinitely inspired by these words and everything that you brought us today. From the start, you talked about business models in a completely different sense from what is typical. Business models that can encompass or consider the economic, social, cultural, political, and other facets and can account for those. And certainly you do that in your work. Then thinking about the holistic solutions, this notion that rarely is there a silver bullet and a holistic approach is necessary. One that again, encompasses these many facets and all of this complexity. I loved your attention to all kinds of challenges, but how you brought a sense of solution orientation to those as you talked about fragmentation, but the possibility of shifting toward balance and taking inspiration even from nature as we manage competition versus collaboration and how to really see those tensions within an inspiring frame. And of course, this notion of running to run in a way that means to flex and move that muscle that is life to not only do and move, but to retreat and think and discern and elucidate a set of key principles, even the criteria that can constitute a code of, con a con code of conduct and a compass for our lives. And of course, having fun 
and creating and learning throughout. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad that we could have this discussion today. And I'm sure that our audience is thankful as well, Wolfgang. Thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. And for those of you who want to continue these conversations, you can find us online at thepropellabs.com. That's thepropellabs.com. Thank you again.